There's a new wave of fighters in the UFC, and these guys are taking over every division. One of those fighters is Chinese-born MMA assassin Song Yadong. Song has amassed a very unique MMA record for himself, and at a very young age. But his rise in MMA didn't come without him having to cross many hurdles blocking his path to greatness. And as he strives to become the champion of the UFC bantamweight division, we can't help but ask the question, will he ever accomplish his dream? Well, there's only one way to find out. Song Yidong was born on December 2, 1992, in Harbin, Halongjing Province, China. Now, right from a young age, Song was obsessed with kung fu and mixed martial arts. And we're not just saying that to hype him up, no, no. This kid was very obsessed with the idea of becoming a professional fighter. He was raised by a single mom, and at the age of nine, when his mates were still obsessing about PlayStations and video games, Song pleaded with his mom to send him to Shaolin, where he could learn from legendary kung fu masters. We don't know about you, but that's definitely not a usual request from a nine-year-old boy. Anyway, Song's mom didn't have many options, so she actually sent him to the Shaolin Temple Complex in central China's Hunan province. But the truth is, Song had no idea that these Shaolin temples are more about training and discipline than they are about fighting. After a few months, Song returned home, because according to him, the training was crazy. He could barely cope. But this didn't kill his desire to want to become a professional fighter. At the age of 10, he managed to convince his mom again to send him off to the city of Dang Feng to pursue a career in mixed martial arts. Song's mom agreed, and three years later, at the age of 13, Song was having his first amateur MMA bout. He was going up against a kid, a kid that, quite frankly, no one expected him to defeat. And you know why? Well, because this kid was the best in the academy and was freaking twice his size. Even Song knew in his guts that he didn't stand a chance. And his guts weren't wrong, because as soon as the fight started, Song had his back against the canvas, with this kid pounding the heck out of him. Of course, Song took a nasty beating that day and maybe broke a couple of bones. But the truth is, Song fell in love with mixed martial arts more because it was the first time he was in a real fight, a dog fight, and he loved it. It ignited his raw passion for mixed martial arts, his passion to be a professional fighter, and his self-confidence anytime he stepped into a cage. In 2013, at the age of 16, Song Yidong made his pro MMA debut under the Rannick Ultimate Fighting Federation, aka Ruff. After his first fight ended in a no contest, his next four fights in the promotion were a complete flush. He bagged four wins in the space of eight months, running through his opponents like Flash from the DC Universe. Okay, that sounds kinda corny, but we hope you actually get the point. In 2014, Song left the rough for the biggest Asian MMA promotion in the world, one championship. His debut fight under his promotion is probably one of the best debuts we've seen in a while. Sion the Executioner G sent Song to a mystical world of combat, putting him under the most pressure he's ever been in inside a cage. But at the same time, you need to give a lot of credit to Song, because this was just his sixth professional MMA fight, while Zion G was way more experienced. And the reason why we're really stressing this fight out is that it marks Song's first MMA loss as a pro. But it was also this loss that made Yidong redefine his approach to MMA. At first, we said all he wanted to be was a pro fighter, right? Well, now he was a pro fighter, but with that loss, nothing really made sense for Yidong anymore. He had a massive decline in his career, moving from one promotion to the next. But after three years of gaining experience as a fighter in the hardest ways possible, Song Yidong finally set his eyes on gold. But not just any gold, on UFC gold. After joining the UFC in 2017, most fans thought Song was going to crumble under the pressure from the bantamweight division. Like back then, we had freaking Cody Garbrandt, TJ Dillashaw, and Peter Yan going up the ranks. Dominic Cruz and Uriah Faber, who weren't really competing back then, but still had one foot in the division. It was one bloody fight to the next, and 20-year-old Song Yidong definitely didn't fit in. But if there's one thing this young fight prodigy has taught us, it's the power to always believe in your own abilities. He won his first fight against fellow debutante Barat Kandera via guillotine choke in the first round. It was pretty impressive, but could he keep things up at that pace? Well, to answer that question, Song Yidong won his next fight and the next one after that, and the next one, going four fights undefeated in the UFC. A record like this from a 21-year-old boy moved the spotlight to Yidong. All eyes were on him. Everyone saw him as the man to finally become China's first champion in the UFC. 
but his next fight against Cody Stammen put that thought into doubt. On December 7, 2019, on UFC on ESPN7, Song was on the path to defeating his biggest opponent in the UFC via split decision, but with a point deducted from him for performing an illegal knee, the fight was ruled as a majority draw. As much as that sucked, Song Yedong reminded us UFC fans just how good he was. He decided to switch things up and try out the featherweight division, where he made his debut against Marlon Vera. And you need to know that Marlon Vera is one of the scariest dudes in that division. He's defeated Dominic Cruz, Frankie Edgar, and Sugar Sean, so yeah, he is scary. But before Vera got all these wins in the bag, Yedong took him to a dogfight, testing his skills and technicality like no one had ever done. But let's be clear about one thing, because this fight actually generated more controversy than you think. Yedong won via unanimous decision, but a lot of fans, even Marlon Vera himself, thought he was robbed. And we're not here to answer whether or not that's true, because it's really in the past, but Vera did, in fact, put up a stellar performance. They both did, actually. But a year later, at UFC 259, he had his first loss under the promotion in a fight against Kyler Phillips. At this point, we really don't want to keep dragging on and on about his wins and his losses, because it's pretty obvious he's as good as people say he is. His fighting style and his melting pot of combat skills all make Song a hard fighter to get past. His win against Marlon Moraes put him in the number 10 spot in the UFC bantamweight rankings with a possibility of entering the top 5 if he defeated Corey Sandhagen at UFC Fight Night 210. This was Song Yadong's first fight in the main event. A win against Corey Sandhagen would have put him into talks for a title fight, but sadly after a horrific cut opened up above his left eye in the fourth round, the fight had to be stopped and Corey Sandhagen was given the win via TKO. According to the judges' scorecards, Sandhagen was already on the path to winning via split decision. That's if, of course, Song Yidong also lost the fifth round. But all that doesn't matter right now. The big question is, what's next for Yidong? While well, Song Yidong is now ranked 8th in the bantamweight division and is still very much on the path to getting a title fight. We don't really know what the UFC has in store for him, but we believe a fight against Pedro Munoz wouldn't be a bad one. Munoz is coming off a bizarre fight against Sean O'Malley which was ruled a no contest after he suffered an inadvertent eye poke. Munoz also needs a big win in the worst way because he's had four losses in his last six outings, but it isn't indicative of the danger he is to his opponents. Plus, he's currently ranked number 9 in the stacked bantamweight division, while Yadong is sitting right on top of him at number 8. But again, Yadong might not be willing to take the fight since he's ranked higher. A fight against maybe Peter Yan, Marab de Valishvili, or Dominic Cruz would be more appealing for Song. Song Yedong is just 25, and at this rate, it's almost certain that he will eventually win the UFC Bantamweight title. So who do you think Song Yedong should face next? Let us know in the comments section down below. In the meantime, kindly check out either of these videos shown on your screen right now. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Bye!